just by the bay. My name is Jen. I am a captain and camp director here at Save the Bay. And today we're going to be talking about water testing in Narragansett Bay. If you could give us some likes, some thumbs up, give us some comments, let us know everything's working and you can hear us, that would be wonderful. We're going to start in just about a minute. We'll let uh, some people join us and give a few more moments for them to connect. While we're waiting, we can show you our vessel here. This is the Alita Morris, one of our education vessels that we use all year round to take groups out on. Um, we do seal watches during the winter time. We have our wonderful summer camps in the summer, and then we have school groups that come out with us all school year, and we do similar things like you're gonna see with us today. Awesome, so I got the thumbs up. It looks like we're ready to get going. Um, so we're gonna start off with a quick recap of our chart. So we have about 1,600 square miles of land that surrounds Narragansett Bay. It's called our watershed. Whenever it rains on a day like today, that rainwater can either go into the ground or it can go into local rivers and streams. Either way, a lot of that water is gonna make its way down here to Narragansett Bay. And all that water is fresh water. We also have nice, salty water that comes up into Narragansett Bay um, through things like high tide and the currents that are pushing it up here. Now today we're down here in Newport. We are right in Newport Harbor, so we're pretty close to the Atlantic Ocean, but still we're going to do some water testing today to find out what's going on with our water. The bay is home to lots of different animals and plants, but the water in the bay has to be just right for them to be able to live there. There are a lot of different tests that we can do to check on the status of the water. Um, some tests are longer than others, and we don't have the equipment to be able to do it, and other people will help us, like other universities and organizations, look at the water quality as well. But today, we're going to show you some simple water testing things that we do, and most of the time, we're doing this while we're out on this boat with our campers or with our students on their uh, class trips. And the three things we're going to look for today are temperature, which is how warm or cold the bay could be. We're also going to look at the salinity, which is how salty the water is. And the third thing we're going to look at is the dissolved oxygen, which is oxygen that just gets dissolved into the water so the animals in the water can use it to breathe. They need to breathe just like you and I, they just do it a little bit differently through their gills. And so we're gonna get started today with collecting water from two different places in the water column. So if you think of a column, kind of like this right here, run straight up and down. Imagine an imaginary column running through the water. We're gonna test at the top of the column, which is at the planktonic zone, or the surface. And we're also gonna test water from the bottom, the benthic zone. Now. Do you think the water that we test at the top and the bottom will be the same? If you want to leave some of your suggestions in the comments, that would be great. And we'll get back to those in a little bit. Uh, we have a question from Lexi, age nine, and she wanted to make sure that uh, uh, what kind of water comes from the ocean? Is it fresh water that comes from the ocean or is it salt water that comes Great from the ocean? Great question, yeah. Um, the Atlantic Ocean is filled with salt water. So we get that salt water that comes up and also the fresh water that flows in from the rivers. Those meet in Narragansett Bay and they mix together to make brackish water, which makes a really awesome habitat here in the bay called an estuary, a place where the rivers meet the sea. Thanks for the question, Lexi. It's a great one. So we do test these different things like temperature, salinity, and dissolved oxygen so that we can make a hypothesis and um, ask the question if whether or not we will collect animals when we typically put our trawl net over and try to find some. So anyone know what a hypothesis is? I think Chris says a hypothesis is a scientific guess. Exactly, right? We want to make a guess whether we will or will not collect things based on the information we have. So is the water testing telling us that things could live here or not? And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to find out. So I'm going to get us started. I'm going to collect our water from the bottom, that benthic zone. And the tool I'm going to use is our water sampling bottle. So right now it is open. 
to the bottom and um, we're probably close to 20 feet deep here. We're gonna send this heavy weight, it's called a messenger, sends a message to the bottle to close it and trap that bottom water and bring it back. And we can bring it right on board with us. I'm gonna get this opened up so we can send it down. Matthew says that he thinks the top and bottom water are not the same, but he's been to bay camp, so uh, he kind of cheated, he says. Right <laughs> All right, well, let's find out if I can get this to stay open. Ah, scientific equipment, always a little. All right. Seems that our water bottle is uh, being a little pesty today. I don't think it likes the weather either. There we go. Right, and I use my arm span, my wingspan, to count out about five feet. Well, Lexi uh, has uh, uh, said that she thinks the bottom temperature is going to be colder than the top temperature. Uh, so that's her hypothesis. All right, that's a great thought. Let's see what we find out. So the next thing I'm gonna test is our salinity, which is again, testing how much salt is in the water. We use these, they're called hydrometers. This is just one tool you can use to, to do this test. That one's upside down. Um, but we're gonna see what these are telling us today. I like to use two, just in case one's not working properly. So we can compare and make sure they're pretty accurate. what we get. Now when we're reading salinity, we want to read these numbers, the ones that are in purple on the outside, those whole numbers there. And so if you're following along with me, it looks like this one's at about, uh oh. Looked to me to be at about 26. Yeah, 26 or 27. Wind is not helping that today. But yeah, this one's at about 27. 
And this one is pretty close too. I'd say that's about 27 as well. And what units are we using when we measure salinity, Captain Jen? So when we measure salinity, we are measuring in what's called parts per thousand. And you can see it abbreviated as just PPT. Um, but basically what that means is when, say take for example, we had a thousand buckets on the boat, 27 buckets would be filled with salt and the rest would all be filled with just fresh water. So 27 parts out of a thousand. And I'm gonna record that information down because I know I'm gonna forget what these are when we're talking about them. So that's 27 PPT. And that one was our bottom sample, correct? Correct. All right. All right, so now let's test our surface sample. So again, these are looking like they are on 27 parts per thousand. Great. Alright, so I will record that number down too. Do you think if uh, maybe we had a bigger depth difference, maybe the uh, difference in salinity would be greater, Captain Jen? It could be different um, if we had different testing conditions. With this wind today, we're not getting off the dock, so it's not terribly deep here. We do usually like to get out by the channels where it's much deeper and can be up to 40 or 50 feet deep, and sometimes there we do see some big differences with our, in our salinity. All right, the next thing we're gonna get to is dissolved oxygen. This one, like I said, is super important because the animals in the water need to breathe too. So we want to make sure that there's enough oxygen present. Now what we like to see for a reading is above 3 milligrams per liter. If it's below 3 milligrams per liter, there's not enough oxygen there for animals to be happy, to be able to breathe and live in that area. Ideally, above five or six or seven would be really great for them. But anything below three is not so good. So let's test it out and see what we find. So we're gonna slowly move the probe around in the water to make the water flow over it. And we are reading this top number here. And right now it is telling us 10 milligrams per liter of oxygen. That sounds like it's plenty for fish and other creatures in the bay, Captain yeah, Jen. sounds great. Sounds like there's a lot of oxygen in the water. Um, and the, if there are animals in there today, they should be pretty happy with that reading. Now that was our bottom. Let's see what's happening at the top. got 9.9 .9 milligrams per liter, pretty close to 10. I'd say those two readings are pretty close to one another and they're both healthy enough for animals to live in there. They're actually really, really great numbers to see for animals to survive in the bay. So where does the oxygen in the bay come from, Cam Jen? Huh? So the oxygen in the bay actually comes from all the plants that are living in the bay, especially the little tiny plants that you can't see with your eyes that you need a microscope for. They're called phytoplankton. They're producing a lot of oxygen. And just like plants on land, they go through photosynthesis. And so they make oxygen that is then available in the water for the animals to breathe. All right. Last thing we need to look at are the temperatures here. So we'll start with our surface water. And it looks like we're at about 41 degrees Fahrenheit. It's pretty tough to see in the camera with the gray day that we have here. All right, and let's see the bottom. We're at about 40 at the bottom. So it sounds like it's a little bit colder at the bottom, but it's still pretty chilly throughout. I don't think I'd like to go swimming. Yeah, important information to know. 
Um, it is not warm enough for swimming in the bay yet. Um, but the good news is, is that the weather outside in our air is warming up, so the bay should start warming up soon too. So let's take a look at our data. And we'll start with our temperatures. It did look like Sorry, our phone call. <laughs> is a little bit warmer than the bottom. And that actually fluctuates depending on what season we are in. So in the winter time, the bottom can be a little bit warmer if we're in deep enough water. And the top gets colder because it's really close to that really cold air in the winter time. In the summertime, it actually flips. And so in the summer, the bottom is colder and the top is a lot warmer. And that's because the sun is shining down on the bay, super strong and warm, and the air around it is nice and warm too. So the surface can warm up a lot faster than the bottom water can. Let's take a look at our salinity. Our salinities are the same. Ooh, it's a little breezy out here. Huh? The salinity uh, was 27 parts per thousand. That makes sense because the ocean salinity is about 35. But remember, we do get that mix with fresh water, and so it should lower the salinity down in the bay. So 27 is a pretty good average for Narragansett Bay. Now, oftentimes, like Captain Eric asked earlier, we do see differences between top and bottom salinity. The bottom is usually saltier than the top, because it's more dense. There's more stuff in that water with all that salt, and so it stays at the bottom. And that less salty water tends to stay floating at the top. So a lot of times after a big rainstorm, we can see this number at the surface a lot lower than the bottom water, which is pretty cool to see. And so that makes different layers in our bay, different layers with different temperatures, different layers with different salinity, and so we actually can get some separation in the water, kind of like this bottle of vinaigrette dressing, right? The oil separates from the other things in there, and um, it's called stratification, when we have different layers in the water. It's pretty cool. And the last thing we need to mention here is dissolved oxygen. Like I said, it's pretty high. Anything below three is not good enough for animals to survive. So above that is great. And even as we get above seven, it's even better. It doesn't get to be too much higher, but this is looking pretty good for our, uh, our bay today. Now, we do see these numbers get a lot lower in the summertime, and that's because there's way more going on in the summer. Lots of animals are out and active, and they are using that oxygen. But we also get a lot of excess nutrients put into the bay. And with too many nutrients, it creates these big algal blooms. And when that algae starts to die off, bacteria comes in to eat it. And bacteria need food, but they also need a lot of oxygen. So they end up using a lot of oxygen. And so we can see numbers drop really low to levels where things probably wouldn't like to live in that area. So it's super important that we're really careful with what we're doing on our land so that we don't end up putting too many nutrients down into the bay as well. So overall, it looks pretty good for this time of year down here in Newport. If anyone has any questions, I'd like to open it up for some questions before we get going today. Any more questions, Captain Eric? Well, Janine says it's really cool that we collected all this data today. Do you think we'll be collecting more data like this? Sure, so we do collect this data um, and hopefully we'll have some data available to share in the future. Um, but we do go out really often with students on board all summer long um, and we are collecting this data. So we get to see how it changes throughout the year. But hopefully we'll have some to share as we go forward soon. Excellent. And Captain Chris asks, does the salinity change as you get farther up the bay? Good question, yeah. So down here, we're close to the ocean like I had pointed out on our chart before. So the salinity kind of stays a little saltier down here. But as you go further up the bay, like where our headquarters are in Providence, it definitely does change. And we can see numbers as low as in the teens, sometimes 
even single digits after a really heavy rainstorm. So it does depend on where you are and where you're located in the bay. Cool. Well, that sounds great. Uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, Lexi just told us the ocean has secrets you reveal. Thanks, Save the Bay. <laughs> awesome. Well, I want to thank you all for joining us for another Breakfast by the Bay today. Tune in on Monday at 10 a.m. for another special edition of Breakfast by the Bay. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen, please consider making a donation to Save the Bay if you're able to. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend.